excuse me. Yes, I know, sorry, I do beg your pardon. <laughs> you do know that this is the uh, quiet garage, yes. <laughs> yes, no, I know you weren't making any noise. Forgive me for saying so, but you, well, look a bit. Young, modern, youthful. No, no. You are totally right. I do apologize for making such a brash and unwarranted judgment. Please go about your business. Can I just say, sorry to interrupt, you do have a rather intelligent face and a rather charming air about you. Do you get that all the time? No, just me, a mysterious gentleman on a train. <laughs> What is your name, if I may ask? Well, that's a lovely name. Very pleased to meet you. My name is Grant. Grant Worthington. Pleased to make your acquaintance. And where are you off to tonight? Aha. London as well. Long time away from home. Yes, no, oh, I see. I see. Do you like the paper, by the way? No, I mean, I've, I've already read it. I'm just circling the entertainment. Yes, no, I mean, it's been a long time since I've been in London, and I'm rather keen to see what's on at the theatre tonight. Do you like the theatre? Really? What have you seen? Ah, uh, I'm more of a classics man myself. You must have seen that latest, uh, what was that, Gilbert and Sullivan operetta released last year. The Gondoliers, I think that's on tonight. Have you seen The Gondoliers? It's supposed to be very good. No, no, no. Maybe more of a Shakespeare person. Too right, old Ben, too right. I think they, yes, yeah, I circled it. Tonight at the Globe, they're playing A Midsummer Night's Dream. Have you seen that one? You must. In my opinion, it is his best. Oh no, no, I know people say Hamlet. I know people say Macbeth and various others. Absolute posh, if you ask me. No, A Midsummer Night's Dream is a light-hearted romp. Very enjoyable. Only about three hours long, which is, you know, in my opinion, fine. Yes, and it follows uh, two couples of lovers, you know, two couples. As they go through a sort of enchanted forest and have games played with them by these manipulative fairies. It's on tonight at the Globe. I saw it about five years ago at the Globe. Oh, go on. It's got Mr. T. Forrest playing Bottom. Bottom, of course, being one of the mechanicals. He plays Pitimus in the final act in the Pitimus and Thisbe. Absolutely hilarious. Please, please, I insist, go and see it. Shakespeare's an awfully clever chap. Very funny, of course. Very, uh, what does he do? He's very self-referential. Uh, he uh, often talks about his, his own plays, inside of his plays. Yeah, very meta. Are you sure you don't want to read the paper? Ha ha. I understand. You think it's dull to read the paper on a train. Youths. I'm kidding, of course, I'm kidding. I like you, we're friends. Charming face. 
Uh, yes. I would rather have to disagree. We can't always be gallivanting around, as I have been many adventures in the past couple of months. I can't always be jumping from hotel to grand hotel. Far too ambitious. Far too time consuming. No. Sometimes you just need to sit in a train and read the paper. But, you know, some of the times that I've had in the past few weeks, I tell you. Last week I was involved in a fight. Or rather a battle. Let's call it a battle. Yes, between me and a uh, fellow who looked rather similar to me. Yes, oh, it was epic, I tell you. Thousands, thousands of people came to watch. Yes, no, it was only short. It was only about ten or so minutes long. But a lot happened. A lot, you know. Got the old blood boiling. Sometimes you just need a good fight, you know. Yes, took it out of me though, I must say, which is rather why. Right now I just need to sit and read the paper with your lovely self. Is there anything wrong with that? No. Sometimes we all just need to relax. What have we got here? Ah. Uh -huh. The headline, the influenza. Have you had it? Have you had the virus? No, a few people I know have. Luckily, I've escaped. It seems to mainly be affecting uh, the elderly. Again, I don't know anyone. It's really torn through Belfast. I think London's just beginning, beginning to see some, some increased numbers. Let me read a bit to you. Okay. Yesterday's returns, taken as a whole, are more satisfactory than those of Thursday's. At the Central Telegraph office, the official return brought up to Thursday night shows the number of absentees to be 433. That's quite a few people. The number of sick Telegraph boys is also diminishing. The General Post Office employees absent yesterday were 2,000. And 57. An increase of 27. Who would have thought that a random deadly virus can just take over the world like this? Do you follow sports? The football? What about the rowing? I do like a spot of rowing. The president of Cambridge University Boat Club states that the next inter-university boat race, the boat race, will take place on Tuesday, April 1st at about half past 11, as the tide would serve at too early an hour on the usual day, March the 29th. He also says that no old blues are coming up to assist him on this occasion. Have you rowed? I was a handy stroke in my time. Very handy. <clears throat> they called me the human clock, because I kept perfect time. Oh, what's this? I've, I seem to have been shot. Yes, yes, no, just out before out in the hallway. Yeah, I don't really know the gentleman who did it. Seemed very angry. He pulled a gun on me and shot me. No, I didn't do anything. I was, I was running from him. I looked rather frightened, if anything. Yes, no, it is rather painful. But, you know, stiff upper lip and all that. Not a snowflake. Like this generation. Yes, I do seem to be uh, gradually losing quite a lot of blood. But 
You know, can't have everything in life. What doesn't kill you? Well, uh, it might, but we all have to die of something. It helps to keep pressure on it. Have you seen La Traviata at the Opera House? You haven't? Oh, I was in La Traviata back in the day, back in my youth. I played a matador. You know, with big shoulder pads and red blanket. Di madri dei nos yam matadoris, yam oi prodi no circotadori, etc. Da 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 you absolutely need to. The Royal Opera House. Oh. Oh. Nothing better to do on a Friday night, I tell you. Where are you off to tonight? Where do you live? Nine Elms. It's very close to me. We should share a carriage. Yes, I'm uh, Shaftesbury Avenue. Actually, what is the time? us. Yeah, it's a few hours until we arrive. It's quite late. You might want to get some sleep. Actually, before you do, I have rather an odd favour to ask, if that's okay. Well, you see, I'm rather a uh, photography enthusiast. Have you seen one of these before? Brand new. This is from Kodak. No, they sell the latest in camera technology. The thing I like about this is you have rather no idea how to get into it. Were it not for a secret button that sits just on the top over here. And if you press it, when I find it, where is it? I've lost it. Come on, secret button, where are you? It's on the other side. Secret button. It just pops right open. Oh. Will you look at this? It's a thing of absolute beauty. Now, if we simply Slide it out. It just clicks into place there. And there we have it. Brand new Kodak camera. Have you used one before? No. Well, this here is your viewfinder. So if I look down, there you go. Hello. Hello, I can see you. Very good, very good. And down the back here, I won't open it up because it's got film in it. I don't want to uh, overexpose the film. But here is where the film goes, in the little spool thing. <coughs> handle, very nice. Very nice leather handle, it's very well made. It cost about 20 pounds, which is quite a lot, don't you think? So here we have our aperture. So that's how much light we let in. So let me just show you. Basically, a wide aperture means that we let in 
a lot of light, which means that I can afford to be a little less still when I'm holding it. Maybe I need to only be still for two seconds or so, which is as quick as a flash. Oh, it's gorgeous. I was going to ask, do you mind if I take a photograph of you? It's just that, you know, I want to have this suitcase full of memories. And you are my latest. And I do not want to forget this moment with you. Please, is that okay? I don't, I, I don't mind how you pose. <sighs> yes. Ah, uh, uh, no, I, I'm still gushing blood. But it's best if we try to ignore it, I think. Okay, so. Looking at me. Good. Okay, yes. Posture. Posture. Wide eyes. Okay, maybe just... Scrunch your face up, really, really ugly, and then psh, freshen the expression up. Because I know how the eyes can water if you leave them open for too long, you know. Okay, so scrunch the face up. Scrunch, yes. Really, really ugly face. And then brighten it up, and then I'll take a picture. Good. When you brighten up the face, I need you to hold that for about 10 seconds. Okay. <laughs> yes, 10 seconds. <laughs> okay, okay. Are you ready? Are you going to scratch up the face and then brighten the expression up? Like I told you. Yes. Okay. You're watching. What expression are you going to? Going to be smiling or is it going to be more like serious? You know, without any uh, smile. Yes, smile. Okay. Yes, good. And scrunch. You're not scrunching. Scrunch. Ugly face. Come on. You didn't hold it for long enough. Come on, take it seriously. And scrunch. And freshen. Go. Oh. That is going straight into my journal. Can we do one more? Please. Please, just for me. photographs to be perfect, absolutely perfect, tack sharp, you know, almost like paintings. They want them to be full of, full of expression. They want them to be high resolution and high quality. But see, I would rather just have the memory. If it's underexposed, fine. If it's blurry, fine. It all tells a story. Thank you. <sighs> yes, no, there's rather no more to the story, sorry. I wish I had a, an epic tale of, uh, you know, knife fights and me diving into various carriages to 
you know, save people from dying and from the various gunshots. But no, there wasn't much story to it. I just went out of my carriage and then I got shot. Yes. No, it certainly was not a tale of heroism. It was literally just bang, shot in the stomach. And then I sat down and started talking to you. Just random. Such is the nature of life, I guess. All just blinks in and out of time. Sometimes the most you can do is to have a nice chat with a lovely, charming faced person and read a newspaper. Oh, painful though, I have to say. Don't recommend. Zero out of ten. Would not do again. <laughs> you know what? still with me. Good. Okay. Why don't you make yourself nice and comfortable? And we'll read. Okay. Thank you again for letting me take your picture. Stolen farthings. A <laughs> father was one day sitting at dinner with his wife and his children, and a good friend who had come on a visit with them. And as they thus sat, and it was striking twelve o'clock, the stranger saw the door open, and a very pale child, dressed in snow white clothes, came in. It did not look around and it did not speak, but went straight into the next room. Soon afterwards, it came back and went out the door again in the same quiet manner. On the second and on the third day, it came also exactly in the same way. At last, the stranger asked the father to whom the beautiful child that went to the next room every day at noon belonged. I've never seen it, said he. Neither did he know to whom it could belong. <sighs> the next day, when it again came, the stranger pointed it out to the father, who, however, did not see it. And the mother and the children also all saw nothing. On this, the stranger got up, went to the room door, opened it a little and peeped in. Then he saw the child sitting on the ground and digging and seeking about industriously among the crevices between the boards of the floor. But when it saw the stranger, it disappeared. He now told what he had seen and described the child exactly. And the mother recognized it and said, Ah, that is my dear child who died a month ago. 
They took up the boards and found two farthings, which the child had once received from its mother, that it might give them to a poor man. It, however, had thought, Thou canst buy thyself a biscuit for that, and kept the farthings, and hidden them in the opening between the boards. And therefore it had no rest in its grave, and had come every day at noon to seek for these farthings. The parents gave the money at once to a poor man. And after that, the child was never seen.